Thank you for that, Dr. Khan. Up next, we have Marie. Marie, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself with Dr. Joel Khan. Hi. Hi, Dr. Khan. Thank you so much. Um, Hi, I've learned so much. My cardiologist, um, I finally got her to um, let me take it, the um, calcium test, and I got a calcium score of 57. Um, I've been a vegan for two years. My lifestyle is pretty clean. Um, she wanted to put me on statins and I've heard other people have a lot of side effects. And um, she said, maybe red yeast. And red I did yeast, right. Yeah. Red yeast rice. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about that. Is that an option for me or can I just continue with my lifestyle? A couple of comments. A calcium score 57. Again, it isn't zero. It's also not a thousand. And there's plenty of people that are calcium scores of a thousand. And I just happen to have it sitting here somewhere. There's all kinds of data. Yeah. Here's a research study on people with calcium scores over a thousand. It's not a death sentence, but you probably really don't want to be in that elite club of super calcifiers. Not a good place to be. Um, there is a website you can look at called astrocharm.org, A-S-T-R-O-C-H-A-R-M.com, no, dot .org, apologize. And you can put in your age, your calcium score, your cholesterol numbers, your blood pressure, and you can actually calculate what's your risk of having a heart attack in the next 10 years. It's a very scientific way to deal with calcium scores. Um, there is actually some published data that with a uh, calcium score under 100, it's very hard to prove a benefit of adding statins in routinely. That's not my data, that's not my bias. It was 14,000 people published about a year and a half ago. Uh, many cardiologists would recommend a statin for a calcium score elevation, but have you tried? What the other people have asked about, whole food, plant-based um, diets, have you gone back eight, 12 weeks later? Some people, not everybody, some people drop their um, cholesterol by 50, 70, 100 points uh, on and on. So it's always worth looking at that. There are supplements that lower uh, cholesterol LDL. Red yeast rice is a tablet or a capsule taken at night, works very well. And there's a research paper with 11,000 people in it looking at the benefit of red yeast rice and it works. Um, and it's an option. There are people that get achy on it, but it's an option. Uh, there's, I, I could go on and on telling you about others, but I would try a hardcore lifestyle push first if you haven't done that to this point and see if you're one of these people that just loves and responds very well to a super clean, you know, whole food plant-based diet. Thanks, Dr. Khan. Up next, we have, uh, is it Francis? Francois, I'm not quite exactly sure. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi. Hi. Uh, I had a calcium test a year and a half ago when it was 1100. Changed my lifestyle. My doctor recommended a statin and also baby aspirins. Uh, I sort of regressed on those two last items, but I'm doing a change in lifestyle. Uh, you said not to repeat it. Okay, I believe that. But is baby aspirin and uh, and the other uh, statin necessary? Yeah, there, there has been a feeling, Dr. Williams uh, has also commented on this, that if your calcium score is over 100, a baby aspirin day was reasonable. But about six months ago in Dallas at the University of Texas, Parkland, they had actual data at 81 milligram aspirin, I'd highly advise. I hope at some point you've done a stress test I would absolutely order a stress test on a patient with a calcium score of 1100. Uh, it can be a routine stress test, a stress echo test, it could be a stress nuclear. Um, there is data in that range about statins probably being a benefit. We don't have a big randomized study. Now, if you can get your cholesterol to 102 or something like that with diet and fitness, uh, you might argue, um, you know, you need a statin once a week or something silly. Maybe you don't need it all, but you do want your numbers really good. And I certainly would suggest you get your lipoprotein A check. Um, I've written an article. If you go to my clinic website, it was shown there for a minute, conlongevitycenter.com. I have a blog site with several papers. What do you do when your calcium score is high? And they're very detailed. It's also a very natural approach. 
And, and there it is again, everybody. You can take that down now, conlongevitycenter.com, uh, right? And up next, Dr. Com, we have Rita. Rita, if you would go ahead and unmute, please. Hi, Dr. Khan. Uh, this is Rita. We met a few years ago at the um, World Vegetarian Vegans at the HK Shahs in Long Island, New York, if you remember. And I do not know, I think you also remember, yeah, my friend, uh, the integrative and functional medicine cardiologist, Regina Drews. Oh, I know um, Regina very well, yes. Yeah, yeah. She, we are colleagues. And just a question for you that the lab, I think it's the Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Heart Clinic people have uh, joined hand with the lab core for the cardio IQ test. Obviously physicians are not aware of it. And many of the cardiologists also may need help in reading that test. Have you used it or what is uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, when you right. see that, because I had asked Dr. Houston also, you know, he didn't seem to be kind of much more, but what are your views? Well, you're right. There was, and I have no financial conflicts. There was a startup in Cleveland called Cleveland Heart Lab about a decade ago. Um, Cleveland Clinic owned 10% of it. They actually sold the business about three and a half years ago to Quest Lab. You said LabCorp, but it's actually Quest. So, you know, Quest is the largest lab provider. It's what I use personally. Again, no financial interest, just their, the access to every advanced lab that's out there from the Cleveland Heart Lab and the Quest family. LabCorp does almost everything you need. There's a couple like TMAO, you might not get a LabCorp. And some people still send to, it's called Boston Heart or True Health. But all of that is to say advanced labs beat simple labs when you're dealing with complex situations. So um, I know, you know, Dr. Houston likes a company now that I think about it called Vibrant. I mean, it's really just to say, don't settle for average labs, you know, do, do some other options. Thanks, Dr. Khan. Up next, we have Mary. Mary, if you'd go ahead and unmute, please. Hi, Dr. Khan. This was just an incredibly informative presentation and I really loved it. Um, Thank you. I've been asking in the chat window about the possibility of getting your slides as a PDF because they were not legible on, on full screen. I still couldn't read all the type on them. I'm super interested in what you have to say. Sure, I, I'm happy to share them. Uh, none of them are proprietary or secret. Uh, so it's totally up to the organization how they handle that, but no problem. Uh, thanks. And uh, I guess Dr. Khan, we can work that out afterwards with our team. And sure. Perhaps you can send them over to us. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have Linda. Linda, if you would go ahead and unmute, please. Hi, Dr. Khan. I'm a big fan and follower. I listen to your PCAST every week. Um, <laughs> I, have, yeah. I have a problem. Um, I have been following a whole food plant-based diet, more or less about 90% for a few years. And at first I saw my cholesterol and LDL get down to almost normal, very excited. I'm not overweight. I'm 68 years old, but couldn't get it low enough. And I do have high lipoprotein A. Currently it's 90. And my calcium score was like 42, a little bit of plaque in my carotid artery, so on and so forth. So I finally, after many years, agreed to go on a statin. First, I started on a baby dose of simvastatin, up and down, up and down, wasn't really working. I finally agreed to go on a sort of moderate dose of prevastatin, still couldn't get me there. Doctor wanted my LDL under 70. And I understand that now from watching everything and the lipoprotein A, couldn't get there. So I agreed to go on 80 milligrams of prevastatin. I've been on it for six months. I've been eating the same way, like 90% whole food plant-based, no meat, no, you know, really careful. I was having no oil until recently, a teaspoon. Anyway, it went up. It went from 85, something like that to 99 on double the dose in six months. And I was floored. I thought, finally, this is going to plummet. And it didn't. Do you have any idea why that could have happened? I have a thought, you know, and again, I don't, I obviously haven't looked at your actual numbers. Uh, you know, I do do consults on people all over the world, but uh, we can talk about that if you go to my website. Um, there, there is in some people, you know, our liver produces cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and our intestines absorb 
fats, cholesterol, saturated fat from our diet. There is some data that is sometimes called cholesterol creep. The body's pretty tricky. I mean, your LDL cholesterol production is dropped by a statin and the intestines increase the absorption of fats and cholesterol from the diet. And even if you're eating no fat, your liver's making fats that show up in your bile, that show up in your intestine all the time. You want that, you can't help that. So there can be that kind of creeping up. Now, you know, with the doses you're talking about, you wouldn't expect it. There is a prescription drug that was known as Zetia, Z-E-T-I-A, now known as ezetimibe, that blocks in the intestine the fats going into your body. And sometimes if you actually reduce the dose of the statin, and add Zetia, which is a very inexpensive, well-tolerated drug. You use them as a combination. You actually, you're blocking both parts. You're blocking production, you're blocking absorption. You get better numbers long-term and really very, very well-tolerated. Um, so that, you know, you, you might ask your doctor, can we cut back on my statin and add in Z-E-T-I-A? It's always 10 milligrams a day. And let's just see two months later what my numbers are like. It works like a charm.